Hello, re-engagers. Uh, my name is Brock. Thank you guys for coming back for another week of talking about our marriages. And before we begin uh, talking about marriages for just a moment, uh, I'd like to give my continual social distancing observations, but I'd be careful if I was you about my social distancing observations because anything I've done to socially distance has not worked. So yes, Corona, COVID-19 has come to my home. And so my daughter uh, got uh, the virus and brought it in. And so we've all had to suffer through that. We've been quarantined for a few weeks. So, but everyone's completely fine. We're just a couple days away from being released and going back out into the world. And, uh, you know, so our symptoms were super mild. It's like, it was more of an inconvenience than it was anything else. And so I'm very grateful for that. But so my social distancing observations are this. As I know, it's a little more difficult to get the virus twice. And so am I now exempt from wearing a mask? Well, but I would, would I be shamed if I was exempt from wearing a mask? Is it all right for me to run up and breathe on other people? Because maybe that can't affect them at all. So those are not good observations. I will not do any of those things. I'm just joking around. But it is a little weird uh, to think that uh, uh, we've been through that. But we're, we're totally fine. And so uh, so don't pay attention to my social distancing observations. But do, do wear a mask. Uh, do stay away from people. Just uh, you never know. Because we didn't really get affected by it too much. And we still had it. So, But we did get tested. And we're all... All fine. Everybody's everybody's good. So uh, this week I want to do something a little different. One of the things I really love about reengage is the idea of story, the idea of testimony. The church has long done testimonies where people share what God has done in their life, and the reason we've done that in the history of the church is because we want to remind others that God has done this before and He can do it again. He can do it. He's done it in my life. And if he's done it in my life, he can for sure do it in your life. And so I love stories about marriages being healed, being reconciled, being uh, brought back together, uh, because I think it gives us all hope that no matter what we're going through, if it seems to be, as the world might view it, kind of a small thing or a very big troublesome thing, that I've seen God work through those marriages. I've seen God bring healing to every level of those marriages, whether, hey, we're struggling a little bit because our kids have moved out, we're empty nesters now, and our communication isn't going like we thought it should. I've seen those people find healing and find hope. I've seen people come to re-engage that their marriages were falling apart, people just crying because they were just so fearful about the future, and I've seen God restore those marriages. I've seen it right before my eyes. And so if you would have asked me years ago when I was preparing to do ministry and preparing to do church work, uh, if I, if you could said, hey, we'll give you a couple stories throughout your career of marriages being healed, I would have said, I'd take it. That'd be a great, great career. But it's been beautiful for the last few years. I've seen dozens and dozens and dozens of people walk in the door and find themselves in a difficult spot and find some healing. And so it does take a little work. It does take a little perseverance. It takes some self a reflection and observation, finding a new way of thinking about things. But I want to share this uh, testimony with you, the story about God's redeeming power, because it's a reminder for all of us, not just to say, oh, it's not a teaching, I shouldn't pay attention to that, but a way for us to learn from other couples, maybe some mistakes they've made, but it's also an opportunity to us, for us to remember that God is in the business, I truly believe this, God is in the business of reconciliation, of healing, and restoration, and especially as we're talking here today. I believe God is in the business of restoring marriages. So watch this story and be reminded and learn from it that God is in control. Thank you, guys. Mandy and I met at a fall retreat in high school. And at the time, we were complete opposites. Jason was a grungy band guy, and I was a blonde cheerleader who was into everything school spirit. And the only thing we had in common was Jesus. Shortly after we started dating, my college career was cut short when I tried out for a TV show called American Idol. And um, it went better than I could have ever imagined. I ended up uh, being the third runner-up on the seventh season. And it kind of, uh, you know, shot me into a music career that I had always dreamed of. As I pursued this career and this dream, things looked really well from the outside and things were going great, uh, you know, professionally. But um, I really struggled to connect with God during this time. You know, I was constantly traveling on the road and without um, any real community. In that time, I started heavily leaning on um, pornography to kind of deal with my stress. 
and depression. And the further I went, the longer I went in pornography and in isolation, it ultimately led me to an inappropriate relationship that would put Mandy and I's relationship in jeopardy. I was just extremely hurt and just in shock that, you know, the person that I knew and loved could do this. Um, and we decided to take several months apart. Um, and after those months, I really saw that Jason had a truly repentant heart. And I made the decision that I was going to try and forgive him. Over the next few years, Mandy and I made huge strides in the trust department. I did whatever I could to show her that my true desire was to love God and to love her and, uh, and leave my reckless behavior behind. So um, as we were doing that, you know, we ended up getting engaged on Halloween. And uh, then we were married two months later on January 2nd, 2010. And I really thought marriage would mark an end to all my troubles, but instead what it did was place a spotlight on my faults. Uh, you know, my pornography habit didn't disappear overnight as I had hoped. Um, about nine months into our relationship, we decided to go uh, to a recovery ministry at our church on the suggestion of a friend. And around the same time, we also joined a, a small group at our church. And these two things started to have a, a big impact on me. Uh, you know, I had always told Mandy half-truths about my past and about my struggles. You know, I came to a point that I, I believed that the right thing to do is to be open and to confess. I decided I wanted out of my marriage and I started looking up divorce attorneys in Dallas. And um, ultimately, my love for Jason was completely conditional and not at all a picture of the unwavering love of Christ. And so whenever we shared with our new small group where we were at and what was going on, um, you know, we, we didn't really know what to expect, but we were really embraced with open arms and we didn't feel any judgment or condemnation, but our mentor couple actually opened up to us um, in light of our circumstance and shared a bit of their story and we were shocked to find out that um, they had a very similar past to ours and it was, you know, especially surprising just because of, you know, they had a three kids, a great marriage, they were on staff at our church and were just great leaders and if God can do this for them where they were, then maybe he can do it for us. After hearing our mentor couple's story, um, I really had a change of heart. God gave me a new conviction to stay in my marriage and a resolve to love my husband through this struggle and to forgive him. I often felt justified in my anger and my unforgiveness and bitterness and didn't see those for what they truly were. Luckily, God in His grace um, opened my eyes to my own sin and my own need for forgiveness. Another thing that we did along this journey that really helped was getting involved in our church's marriage ministry. Um, it's called Reengage, and it really kind of laid the groundwork um, and gave us a structure to really uh, just build up our marriage again on the truths of God and what He says. I continued to struggle and my pornography addiction didn't stop overnight, but as I learned to be open and honest with my wife and our small group and even myself, my life and marriage began to change. Um, through confession, God taught me humility, you know, I had to acknowledge that I couldn't overcome my sin on my own. I couldn't even love my wife well without God's direct and daily help. Today I'm no longer a prisoner of pain or anger or the past. Um, I'm free to forgive because God's forgiven me. Forgiveness isn't a one-time thing you say or you do. It's a way of life. My identity is in Christ alone, not in my husband, not in our marriage, not in how good and bad we're doing, but that God alone is the only one who can satisfy me. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. Jason and I are in a better place than we ever thought possible. I trust him and he loves me well. God took our mess and made it into something beautiful.